roof pipe boot flashing leak inspection. This call just came in. We're just in the area. I figured we'd work this in real quick, but this is a really good example of explaining why hiding your pipe boot flashing is not a good idea. Some of the misinstalls uh, or things people do and install them wrong. I understand they want to try to hide this, but you want it to function, not just look good. When the pipe boot flashing is right to the roof deck and the shingles come over everything, anything hitting that goes under all of your roof, which is horrible. The second miss uh, install that I see people do is well, they typically take the pipe boot and dump it out on the extreme headlap of a shingle. So in this case, it's barely catching the shingle here. Well, there's two issues with that type of install that goes wrong is the flashings typically don't come out very far. It doesn't matter what flashing boot it is, plastic, aluminum, steel, lead, copper, whatever, it only comes out so far. And if you're flashing, your shingle is not up past that sufficiently, any water diverting around can easily go off the edge of it. That's not as common as an issue as what we're about to see right here with this keyway. If your flashing flange does not come down far enough onto a shingle, and you happen to have a keyway that comes together right in the area of that boot itself, this is what you typically see happen. You can see the dirty water trail. It's all the evidence you need right there. It is flowing off the pipe boot, coming right in this keyway right here. Now, why is that a problem, you might ask? This shingle only goes up so far. Doesn't matter what shingle brand manufacturer, they all cross under just about an inch and a quarter. Some may vary in different sizes. And why is that a problem? Well, if it only goes up this far from here up is where water is trickling in right onto your roof deck. So at that point, your last defense is going to be your paper, paper barrier, whatever it is, black paper, synthetic, ice and water, doesn't matter. You don't want it under your shingles. You want it on top of your shingles. So the over under, the water runs downhill, your shingles come up. Typical rule of thumb we use is your shingle has to pass the back side of your pipe boot before you put your flashing boot down. Then your shingles go on top of it. So water running downhill, it's this and is on your pipe boot flashing. Whatever is on it, on either side, doesn't matter, runs out on top of a shingle. You've got to use that uh, judgment call of your own on where you actually break it. If you go under too far, part of your boot is going to be exposed, which is not the issue. But if it's too much exposed, you risk water going in under the side or catching your nails, which over time rust out. You might ask, why is this just now showing signs and issues? Well, because they caulked it. The caulking is not what you want to rely on. You want the pipe boot to do its job as it's designed to, not rely on caulking. Over time, the caulking starts to fail. It cracks or it breaks away from the shingles. At that point, the water trickles in and goes under and causes these issues. If left unaddressed too much longer, if it's not already, probably got rotten wood in the area and have to have a little bit bigger of a repair bill now. What I'm going to do real quick for these people is shove a piece of flashing up under there to try to divert that, get it to go a little further. Caulking's not going to stick because it's so dirty and nasty and also wet. Looks like it's an older, discontinued on corning shingle. <sighs> I'm actually here because uh, they tried to turn this into insurance. I really don't see much wind damage. Nevertheless, even if there wasn't, it's a discontinued shingle, should still cover it. But the thing is, is whoever came out to try to convince them into turning it into insurance, insurance denied it. Now they're MIA. Choose your contractors wisely. Until next time, be safe. See you on the next video.